the right program, I suppose. Anyway, greetings, gamers. My name is Esper Lydia from Magic Missile Games, and I am live streaming Chapter 2 of Perfect Date. Quick recap for those of you who did not watch my chapter one uh, videos on YouTube. Uh, we played as Lydia, we romanced a cat named McMurphy, and then we discovered that each chapter is going to be a different scientist. Uh, so we are trying to find the cure because, as you'll see, they turn us into a cat. Not like immediately, it's a gradual catification, but uh, hopefully uh, we can find the cure at some point. So we're going to get started with Deborah here. I'm finally here! So this is the infamous Cat Island, the place I will call home for the next two months. When I initially received a letter saying I had been placed on a reserves list for the job, I thought that was probably a kind way of saying no thanks and put it out of my mind. So imagine my surprise when, sometime later, I got a call saying there was an opening for me. Should I still be interested? I have a sudden pang of nerves that it's all a dream, and rummage through my bag until I find the proof that puts my mind at ease. This is all very similar to the first chapter, but different, because the first one didn't mention a reserves list. Dear Deborah, we are pleased to be able to offer you the position of research assistant to Professor Popper at our research facility on Cat Island. The position will be for an initial period of eight weeks. Your contract will be sent separately. We look forward to working with you. Your sincerely, Professor Popper, PhD, BSc, HONS, DPG, LMNOP, all that stuff. No, no mistake, that's my name. Right there in the top left hand corner, and there's his name at the bottom. The genius behind this whole operation, Professor Popper. The ferryman comes out from behind the steering wheel and shouts rather brusquely. Take all your belongings. We won't be back for days, so don't leave nothing you'll need. Thanks, Skipper! He totally ignores me, so I pick up my bags and disembark. A beefy-looking man, who I presume is island security, is waiting for me on the jetty. Hello! ID card. Oh, of course! I reach into my back pocket and show the laminated card I was given on the mainland. So, I'm literally picking up right where I left off. So, March 1st, whereas I started on January 1st. I mean, I'm a lot less awkward in this one. I don't know if it's the, the person I picked, or if uh, the game designers, the Bay Team, decided to just streamline it a little bit so you didn't have to go through quite so much awkwardness. Uh, either way, I'm not complaining, I'm just curious. He barely looks at it before striding off, grunting over his shoulder. This way. I follow him down a dirt track path and get my first proper view of the island. It's beautiful. After no more than a couple minutes trekking, we're in base camp, which is modest but functional. It's a bit like glamping, really. We are different people. I mean, I didn't rave over the, the plants like I did in Chapter 1, and Chapter 1 I compared it to a military outpost, not glamping. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Here. He stopped at the largest of the tents, indicating I should go inside. As I enter, the professor looks up from his paperwork. Come in, come in, you must be Deborah. Delighted to have you on board. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to meet you. You must be exhausted after your long journey. Let me offer you some refreshment. Water? Coffee? Something stronger? Perhaps a little whiskey? Well, if you're having one, it would be rude to let you drink whiskey on your own. Wink! Jolly good! I can tell you and I are going to get along famously! He takes a swig from the bottle and passes it to me. I try not to show my self-consciousness and surreptitiously wipe the neck with my sleeve before taking a modest sip. I don't expect you to begin work until tomorrow, so I'll just give you your kit and some basic instructions and then leave you to relax for the rest of the evening. Thank you, sir. That sounds great. Okay, so first things first. This is your basic kit. He goes over the pilot tools and equipment, explaining each of them in turn. It's all standard stuff, until... And this is your catalog. He holds up something that looks a lot like a mobile phone, which it does. It looks a lot like a mobile phone. Catalog? Yes. 
It was initially designed to record and store data on the cats, but we've come a long way since then. There's even a chipping pen that comes with it to tag cats so we can keep track of them. It is an extremely valuable piece of equipment, Deborah, and cannot easily be replaced, so I need you to guard it with your life if needs be. I think he's choking at first, but he looks so intense that I decided to take him seriously. Yes, sir, of course I will. Good. He told the last me to guard it seriously, too. And the cats ran off with it, and that's how I got catified. How much do you know, Professor? Good. You'll get to know all the functions as you go along, but for now, I suggest we take a stroll out and see if we can't find a few cats you can try it out on. So I spend the next hour scanning cats under the watch fly of the professor. Yeah, we skip the bit where we introduce the main cast, because we already know them. Deborah doesn't, of course, but she hasn't met them yet either. As I unpack and settle into my tent, I notice something odd. A little dugout under my bed. I reach in and pull out an unexpected find. The personal journal of the previous research attendant. The one before me. That's me! They must have forgotten it, or left it behind? It's an absolute goldmine of information. It's going to get me up to speed with how it all works around here in no time. However, it seems something else was happening here on the island. Something that was troubling them. I get the feeling there's far more going on here than the professor would have me know. In spite of my increasing tiredness, I continue to read. And the journal gets weirder and weirder and weirder and weirder and just a little bit creepy. To the point where I'm not sure I'm still reading or if I've dozed off and I'm now dreaming of talking cats and kidnappings. Eventually, I lose the battle and drift into a deep sleep. I wake with a start. It takes me a moment to get my brain into gear. Interesting. I can hear a scratching sound and the rustling of paper coming from the tent flap. It's a cat with something in its mouth. Suddenly, I'm wide awake. No! Not the journal! Not the journal! It has the journal! I knew it had the journal. Because I was probably smart enough to put the catalog in, like, my pocket or something. Wait! I need that. I need that for reasons. But it's disappeared into the night. I wonder who took it this time. I wonder if it was McMurphy. It was probably Trixie again. Before I know it, I'm out in the cold of night chasing it, running with all my might. I must get that book back. It has everything I need to know in it! Barefoot, dressed only in a t-shirt and shorts, running at full speed into the forest in the dark of night. This is familiar. I know, I read this in the journal. Something similar happened to the previous assistant. Yet here I am, falling into the same trap. I must be crazy. I slow to a stop. I think I'm going to be sick. I realize, of course, I'm close to the danger zone. Everything goes black and I fall to the ground. I open my eyes. A calico cat, one that I scanned yesterday, is standing in front of me. She drops the journal from her mouth. Hi, Trixie. Good to see you again. I pass out. Hey, 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 hey! Look! Look, guys, it's me! It's me from the end of Chapter 1! Why am I not standing by McMurphy? He's the love of my life. Hello, I say. Can you hear me? Can I woo myself? That would be interesting. Are you okay? Here we go again. Move back a bit. Let them breathe. Has it been bitten? The Sphinx Cat is standing over me, staring as I open my eyes. Yes, definitely bitten. Look at its hand. I bring my hand up to my face, and through blurry vision, I can make out several deep scratches and puncture marks. The cats watch me intently. Is this real? I read something in the journal about kidnapping. Catnapping! Yeah! <laughs> We're sorry. It was the only way. You! You stole the journal! Well, but I gave it back to you. But... Why did you take it? To lure you out here, sucker! <laughs> oh, Kibbles, I look forward to meeting you. 
There's no need for rudeness, Kibbles. My head has begun to clear. And I realize if I could talk to these cats, not only is it all true, but it's already too late. I have the sickness. Uh, we need to have a talk, human. No, we don't. I know what's going on here. I read all about it from your last victim. Nakata, that's not very nice. We prefer to think of you as our champion and friend. McMurphy, you silver-tongued Irish charmer. My reputation goes before me. Oh, I know who you all are from the journal, so let's cut to the chase here. You don't know who that one is from the journal. We just did that, dummy. You know what I mean. What happens now? Keep reading the notes. That'll tell you all we know so far. Hang on, who are you? You're not mentioned in the journal. You figure it out. It's not my problem anymore. The new cat slinks off toward the forest area. Oh, don't worry about them. They're preoccupied elsewhere. How cute. Oh, how nice. So what do you say? Are you going to help us or not? Of course I am. I suppose my fate is already sealed. I may as well do my best to help you sort this mess out. Spoken like a true champion. Well, let's hope this one's better than the last one. You shut your mouth, Kibbles. Oh, I thought the last one was pretty good, actually. Unfortunately, they didn't get very far with discovering an antidote or what happened to our friends. My catalog starts beeping. Oh, my alarm! I have to get to work! Go! Oh, and thanks. From all of us. Okay, so McMurphy is probably not going to be a romance option because Lydia is still here. I make it back to the lab fairly quickly, considering how little sleep I've had. I wonder if that's one of the effects of the feline transition? I imagine my agility levels will change. I'm strangely excited about getting to work on the antidote. It's the sort of challenge I love. Being a scientist and all. I'm just about to enter the lab to begin my legitimate work when the catalog beeps a message without any contact information. Something- oh god. There's our glitch again. Some things are better, best left kept to oneself, is what it said. Ominous! I don't have time to work this puzzle out right now, though. I'm already going to be late for work if I don't get a move on. The professor is already working when I arrive, but miraculously, I'm not late, so there's no fuss. I get through the day as efficiently as possible and head back to my tent as soon as my work is done. I want to get to grips with finding out all I can as soon as possible. We should be into... Yep! We are into the game proper at this point. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Before I click on romance, though, let's see what my options are in research and recon. Okay, the ones I did as Lydia are still complete. I've only got one recon here. Snooze has brought me something intriguing. I better check it out. And then in research, obviously the ones I did are complete. We've got one new research. I never thought I could add feline hairstylist to my CV, but it looks like today is my lucky day. And let's see who's in our romance. Floofy Butt! And Snooty Booty. Snooty Booty or Floofy Butt? Oh, uh, that's a tough choice, guys. I love both of these cats. I know it doesn't matter to me that Floofy Butt is a male and Snooty Booty is a female and my characters are female. What does that matter? They're cats. Uh, let's go with Floofy Butt. Uh, let's go with Snooty Booty. She got neglected last chapter. Besides, she brought me something. If if I make friends with her, maybe maybe I'll know more. I'm splayed out like a starfish on the beach in my bathing clothes. It's a swelteringly hot day, and I find it hard to concentrate on my work. So here I am. I let the cool sea wash over my feet and legs as I lay back on the sand. I hear a long, loud sigh coming from somewhere nearby, and I sit up to see where it came from. <sighs> Snooty Booty, in repose under the shade of a palm tree, is looking about her with a concerned expression, one that I've never really seen a cat make before. I go over to her to see if I can help her with something. Are you okay, Snooty Booty? She lets out another long, wistful sigh. <sighs> to be quite frank with you, human, no. I am not okay. I cannot expose this delicate skin of mine to the sun. 
but there is something I need to retrieve from further down the beach. It is quite the predicament. Oh, right. Want me to fetch it for you? Oh, would you really be so kind, human? I would be very grateful. Sure, it's no problem. We can't have you putting that delicate skin of yours at risk, can we? Sneedy Weedy looks grave. Indeed not. Skin care must come above all else, don't you know? Well, it is the largest organ in your body. One must never expose one's skin to the elements, human. It really is quite aging. I wonder if she's mad that she doesn't have fur, like the other cats. I would be mad. One also must never get stressed if one wishes to retain one youthful aura, which is rather difficult on this frightful island. Oh, I know, believe me. How do you know? Are you stressed? Oh no, that would upset me terribly. Really? That's sweet of you. Of course. You really are a precious thing. I do so hope you're finding your time here pleasant. Oh, don't worry about me, Snooty Booty. I'm fine. Now, what was it you'd like me to get for you? Well, before I tell you, I must ask that you don't inform the others of the whereabouts of this particular item. It is very dear to me, you see, and one of the few luxuries I have all to myself. Of course, that's no problem. I can be discreet when I need to be. Determined face. I do so hope so, human. You see, along the beach, just south of here, there is a tree which bears the ripest of coconuts all year round. It is quite splendid. The coconuts are always so sweet and creamy. Snooty Beauty looks as if she's lost in a wonderful dream. Um, sounds lovely? It is! I like to drink coconut water as often as I can, as it is so good for the skin and waistline. But the less civilized denizens of the island keep knocking the coconuts down before they're fully matured. Fortunately, no one else seems to have discovered this particular tree yet. Well, okay, Snooty Booty. I'll try to find some coconuts for you. I'll be back soon. You have my thanks, human. Walking for a lot longer than Snooty Booty led me to believe. I'm not sure if this is even the right tree. They all look the same to me. Although, this one does seem to have more coconuts than others. I decide to take a chance. Bundle up as many as I can carry in my arms and haul them back to her ladyship. By the time I get back to Snooty Booty, I'm faint from the exertion, not to mention walking so far in the sun. I fall to my knees, panting in front of her. She eyes the pile with a distinct air of disapproval. I only needed one coconut, human. Oh. These are far too many! Well, I do apologize, madam. Tell me you didn't plunder the tree. No, there were plenty on the ground already, so... Oh, well, that's a small mercy. At least you didn't hack them down. Hack them down? With what? Well, your hands are rather large and leathery. Snooty booty, I do not use my hands for deforestation. Well, I'm sure you did your very best. Although I really don't know what I'm going to do with so many coconuts. You're welcome, I'm sure. I look down at the pile of coconuts, and it strikes me properly for the first time how strange it is that there are no creatures on the island to plunder them. What do you think it is, Snoots, that keeps wildlife away from the island? Do you mean the magnetic barrier? Magnetic barrier? Oh, do keep up, human. I thought you were meant to be a scientist. I realize she must be referring to the force field that surrounds the island. Now be a dear and crack one open for me. With my enormous hands. Well, you could try, I suppose. I push down the irritation that is slowly rising in me and smile politely. On second thoughts, I'll be right back with a screwdriver. Yeah, I could use some more juice and vodka myself. What? You know, it's a mixed drink. Pretty standard. Snooty Booty looks horrified. Sharp metal tool that bores into things. What on earth do you need one of those for? 
so that I can make a hole to get the water out of the coconut? How else would you propose I do it? Well, look around you, dear. Look at nature's bounties. What about that? Snooty gestures with a limp paw at a shard of rock nearby. Snoots, how do you usually get the water out of the coconut when there isn't a human around? Well, the exuberant kibble simply loves to break things. Had you not noticed? It's one of the few reasons I tolerate him, don't you know? Far better than one of your screw dribbers, don't you think? Hmm. I reach over and pick up the rock. It does look like it could actually do the job. Okay, let's give it a try. Here goes. Holding the coconut in a palm leaf, I gently tap the shell a few times with the stone before finally whacking it. It cracks open surprisingly easily, and the water drains into the leaf. There now! See how nature provides, human? Yep, again. You're welcome. Quite. Snooty Biddy stretches her neck and then her upper body toward the leaf. She sticks her tongue out as far as it can go before raising her big cat eyes to me. I can't quite seem to... I suddenly realize what she's getting at. Well, I probably put it down in the sun like a moron, and as we've previously discussed, Snooty Beauty does not like to go out in the sun because she is all skin and will probably burn. So I'm gonna be nice. I let her struggle for a moment or two before I begin to feel a little bit like a child pulling the wings off of a fly. She can't help the way she is. You seem to be struggling, little boots, but apparently I can't help messing with her. Well, you've placed my libation slightly out of my reach. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like me to help? Bring it a little closer, perhaps? Well, of course I would, human. Are you being deliberately obtuse? I would very much like to help you, Snoots, but you make it rather difficult. How? I don't understand. I've been perfectly clear in my instruction. You see, I am under a spell. It's a very powerful one, which prevents me from following any instruction unless accompanied by some magic words. Oh, would you care to enlighten me? Well, it would go something like this. Please, human, would you mind passing me my libation? Thank you very much. There's a pause, during which I'm really not sure what Studi Booty is thinking. Suddenly, the Sphinx erupts into peals of laughter. <laughs> I seem to have forgotten my manners. Please do be so kind, human. I would be most obliged. Oh, go on, then. I nudge the leaf closer to her, and she delicately laps at it. I truly am indebted. Many thanks. That looks delicious. Mm-hmm. Sudi agrees without taking a break. You know, searching for those coconuts was thirsty work. She already said that she doesn't have a use for all of them. You could probably take one. You could also go back and get one of your own, Deborah. You have legs. I'm sure it was. She's still lapping at the water. Cough. Oh, my throat's a bit scratchy, especially in this heat. Oh, you two are perfect for each other. Be assertive! Sneedy Booty finally comes up for air. Quite. That's the beauty of the coconut, you see. So hydrating, and most palatable, too. You really ought to try it sometime. I look down at the now dry palm leaf. You brought more than one coconut, Deborah. Yeah, that's a good idea, Boots. And the very best thing after drinking coconut water is to curl up and have a nap, you know. Beauty sleep is most important. Oh, is that so? Indeed, human. I suppose you have other things to do now. Uh, well... Snooty Booty yawns and closes her eyes. I suppose I do. Sweet dreams, princess. She snores softly in reply. Well, chapter two is going swimmingly so far. Well, 18.1%. That's uh, almost a fifth of the way. Good job, Deborah. Let's do research. Grooming cats. I never thought I could add feline hairstylist to my CV. Uh, for the Americans in the audience, CV is uh, curriculum vital. I probably pronounced that wrong, but it's basically what everyone else in the world calls a resume. I put on my latex gloves and gather my tools. Brush, scissors, swabs, kitty wipes. I can't help but think I've forgotten something. Ah, of course, treats. 
I leave the tent and head for the lab, stopping to stroke a few of the island's residents on the way. I call out to the lazing subjects as I enter the lab. Looky, looky, what have I got? Shaking the bag of treats, the small lab erupts with hungry meows. Meow. 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 If you want these, you'll have to behave, okay? I open the first crate, home of the grouchy old Mr. Bumble. I gently lift him onto the counter to be groomed. Morning, Grumpy. Let me check your ears. No debris. Lovely. I have a feeling you may be discharged the next day or two. Okay, we finally get an explanation. These are the sick kitties. He was brought in with a mild infection. Slight temperature, weepy eyes, but he seems to have recovered remarkably well. In fact, I'm going to recommend to Professor Popper that we release him by the end of the week. I give Mr. Bumble a cheeky cuddle before I begin to brush his matted fur. Wow, where does it all come from? There's enough fur here to make another cat. Mr. Bumble's beginning to get agitated and lets out a displeased grumble. Please don't make fun of my fur. I know, I know, it's very annoying. Just gotta trim you up a bit and then you can get back to sleep. He resignedly lets me cut some of the hair around his bum and the back of his hind legs. Where it gets matted the easiest with all the sitting, I guess. Aren't you a good boy? Here we go, om nom nom! I pour some of the little fish-shaped treats onto the counter, and the ragamuffin practically inhales them. It's because they don't actually feed them, apparently. None of these cages have cat food dishes. Now let's get you back into your cozy crate. I tuck him away and open the next one. Your turn, socks. Just a cut in color, yeah? I snort at my own joke. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm hilarious. Uh, I'm so awkward. This is... I... I really... Clearly, I should have been a scientist on Cat Island. I would fit in so well. Anyway. I snort at my own joke and begin brushing the little white cat. He's a lot more lively than old Bumble and keeps trying to bite the brush. Arr. Hey, don't make me get the harness, Socks. There's, that's no fun for either of us. The cat seems to understand and settles down, only giving the brush an occasional nip when he thinks I won't notice. Oh, hello. What's this? I notice a little red patch on his neck just under his chin. Oh no, we don't have bot flies, do we? Poor Soxy. I take the magnifying glass out of my inner pocket and examine the inflamed area closer. Ouch. Sox begins to struggle away from me. He must be in quite a lot of discomfort. It's okay, Sox. I'm just looking. I stroke the little cat to try and calm him down. I hate using sedatives on the subjects unless absolutely necessary. After a while, I am able to get a better look at the wound. There doesn't seem to be anything living under there. I'm relieved I don't have to deal with any bot flies. Hmm, looks strange. It's like a rash or a sore, but I'm not sure how or where he could have picked it up. I'm wary about how to proceed. Should I just clean it with some saline solution and let the air get to it? Or should I put some of the Professor's Soothing Cream 116 on it and wrap it in gauze? Hmm. I'm gonna go with the soothing option, because he was already upset. Cream 116 is designed for conditions like this, so I suppose that's what I should use. As I approach, Socks arches his back and puffs up his fur. I am surprised by his reaction. He's normally quite a brave little soldier. Maybe it stings? I dab a little of the cream onto my arm to see what the effect is. After a few minutes, I realize what a twit I'm being. A cream designed for a cat is hardly going to affect my skin. I get on with the job in hand and apply the cream to a very peeved socks. Okay, so the non- the non-talking cats seem to dislike the professor as well in everything he stands for. What has he done to them? Later that evening, I notice a small patch of smooth pale skin on my arm and realize the hair is rubbed off. Yes, new unlocks research six. Curiouser and curiouser and curiouser and curiouser. I'm one more percent closer to the antidote. Interesting. Let's do some recon. Recon seven. Snoots has brought me something intriguing. I'd better check it out. Is it coconut? 
I want it to be coconut. Deborah, are you still sleeping? You really ought to be awake by now. Snooty booty, are you okay? What are you doing in my tent? All this lazing about is very bad for your complexion. To say nothing about the dragging effects on the delicate tissue around the eyes. Oh, I just realized. She called me by my name the first time ever. Now, we must have a heart with her. Is there something I can help you with? Possibly. I have something I want you to look at. Right now? What time is it? Time you were active. Come on. Come along. Well, at least let me get ready. Very well. Snooty Booty sits down and starts grooming herself. After a moment, she looks up again. Why aren't you ready yet? I, uh, can you leave the tent so I can get dressed? Really? Oh, for goodness sake. Snooty Booty rolls her eyes and walks out. I'm with you. She's a cat. I get dressed resignedly and follow her. What do you think it is? I'm intrigued. We're on the beach, staring at a partially buried bottle sealed inside a plastic bag. It looks as though it has only recently washed up. Well, there's really only one way to find out. I pull the bottle out of the sand. It has some kind of document or note in the bag, along with the bottle. What is that thing? Read it to me. It's a good thing I'm just as curious as Snooty, or I would be feeling a lot more irritable by now. I carefully unseal the bag and unfold the paper. I read the note out loud. Initial tests on the most recent formula are encouraging. Subjects 6 through 18 appeared visibly younger. Moderate to severe side effects noted, including increased hair growth and marked mood alteration. Is the professor experimenting on people? And the youth formula turned them into cats? Oh my god, I want to know! Subjects 1 through 5 had major complications. Some new small tumors, skin irritation, partial blindness, and memory loss. We need you to look into this. Check for contaminants and continue to iterate on the formula. Appeared visibly younger! Snooty Booty, is that the most important thing you gathered from this report? You're quite right, Deborah. We ought not to trust it. That note could have been written by anyone. We shall conduct our own experiment. Apply the cream to my skin. Have you lost your mind, Snooty Booty? Did you not hear what I read out? Tumors, blindness, memory loss. McMurphy had memory loss. He couldn't remember any of his loved ones. Statistics bore me. You should know that by now. Let's live a little. I'm willing to take the risk in the name of science. No, we're not taking any risks, Snooty Booty. You wait here while I go and get my kit bag from the lab. Let's see if we can't work out what this stuff is made of. I was hoping the lab would be free, but the professor is in here making some notes. Ah, oh, hello, Deborah. I thought you were taking a day off from the lab today. Oh, yes, I, I am, Professor. I just, uh, wanted to check something. I can't take the test equipment away without the professor getting suspicious. I'll have to come up with some kind of excuse. Well, I wanted to get ahead on some of the field work. There's some samples I found I think could be useful. Pick up the field kit bag. Popper looks up from his work. Oh, what sort of samples? I have to make this believable, but also invite no other questions. Samples are... Fecal. Fecal? Yes, a large poo, sir. It has rather interesting properties. Jolly good. Off you go, then. Nailed it. I take the bag and leave. As I approach the beach, it becomes clear Snooty Booty has managed to break into the ointment. She appears to have spilled some and is now busy rolling around in it. Snooty Booty, what were you thinking? This could be very dangerous. The only danger here is this ghastly sand sticking to my delicate skin. Do help me to get rid of it, Deborah. I try to wipe the sand off, but it is stuck like glue. Underneath the layer of sand, I can see her skin is very pink. There's no time to lose. I pick her up and run to the ocean, trying to use the seawater to clean off as much of the ointment as I can. Put me down! What on earth? I've never been so humiliated in my life! She twists out of my grip and scampers off in a huff. I think I've got it all off, so I leave her to it. Now, back to the samples. There's not much I can do here on the beach, so I'll just have to wait until Professor Popper is finished in the lab.
Well, that was quick. As luck would have it, the professor needed to retire to his tent earlier than usual. He has to read some research papers that arrived from the mainland this morning. I wonder if this fell off the proverbial truck, then. So now I can continue looking into this ointment. I begin by testing the substances for several common compounds found in cosmetics, but it's negative for all of them. I widen the test for other organic compounds. I get a match. About 30% of the ointment is... Cat saliva? If they are using saliva from the cats on the island, they could be infecting all their test subjects with catification. But where have these other side effects come from? I run the ointment again, this time looking for known pharmaceuticals. Before I can get the results back, Snooty Booty comes trotting in. I just thought you should know that security guard is coming this way. You should make yourself scarce before he arrives. Not that I care what happens to you after you threw me in the ocean. I have no time to finish this experiment now, but I will work on it later in the privacy of my tent. I take my things and run before Zane arrives. Alright, but it is time for lunch here, so I am actually going to wrap this one up. But thank you all so much for watching. If anyone's here, if you're not here, thank you for watching at a later point. I hope this isn't too choppy. I will talk to you all another time. And of course, as always, keep on gaming.